Welcome back to the Darting Through the Faith podcast. I'm Father Sean Wilson, and with me is Julia Monin. And how are you, Julia? Hey, you know what? I'm great. You're great. Today's a great day. First day of spring. Yesterday. It was yesterday, yeah. And today, you know, still March. Still March. Mm-hmm. It is still March. Mm-hmm. And you know what March is all about? Tell, March is about certain things. Yeah, like what? Uh, Feast of St. Joseph. Feast of St. Joseph. Mm-hmm. We got the Feast of Solemnity of the Annunciation coming up. Right. And uh, we had St. Patrick was last weekend too. Right, right, Did you right. celebrate St. Patrick's Day <clears throat> anyway? Um. Yeah. Well, not in any ordinary ways. Okay. But yeah, you know, prayed for his intercession sure. and sent my son to school in a Yoda shirt so that he was wearing green. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um. What else? Went to your town hall meeting. That's oh, I celebrated. that's right. It was yeah. great. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. What about you? Uh, Father Jedediah and I went out to dinner, mm-hmm. um, and th- that was about it. Sure. Yeah. Before said town hall meeting. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, right. yeah. So March is all f- sorts of full of all sorts of blessings, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A year ago, do you remember March a year ago? We had mustaches for March. I do. Mustaches in March. Mm-hmm. Mustaches with March. Marching for mustaches. What was that called? <laughs> I don't know. It was it called matter. ridiculous. That's what yeah. it was called. But yeah. anyway. And this year, right. the good Lord has blessed us with Mohawks for March. Folks, if you're not watching this, if you're listening to the audio, this is no joke. I am sitting across the table from Father Sean Wilson, who is in a Mohawk. It's legit. The Mohawk's on me. Right. What did I say? You said you're I'm in a Mohawk. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just a terrible joke. <laughs> Um, it's for real. He walked in here today and I lost, I lost it. You lost your cool a little bit. I lost it. I don't even know what my response was. Thankfully I wasn't in front of the camera. When it's I was true. It. You were just stunned, right? <clears throat> and there was nothing vulgar about it. Oh yeah, know? no. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I'd like just, a second chance though, so I can make my reaction <laughs> more vulgar. <laughs> well. Um, it, anyway, it's real. He did it. He did it folks. Mm-hmm. So all you who have been saying, where's the Mohawk? Multiple parishioners, that's kind of like, you know, got to give the people what they want. They've come up and said, where's the Mohawk, you know? Don't make promises that you're not going to you're not gonna follow through on. I thought, oh, okay, I want to be a man of integrity. <laughs> there are other ways to go about that. You may have missed the mark on this, that if this mm. was the goal that you were going for. No? I... I guess somebody else will have to judge sure. that, right? Anyway, folks, yeah. he did it. Yep. It's here. It's real. I'm not making Mohawk. it up. You got to watch yeah. the video if you want to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, and of all things we're talking about today, we're talking about holy orders. Oh, yeah. And so, I yeah. mean, it's a great day to... Uh, it is. To reflect on the gift of the priesthood. <laughs> exactly. You, Maybe not priests themselves, but the priesthood in general. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. And I... I had to, we, we, I chatted before we got going here that we said last week, we be myself, Grace and Valerie who helped produce the show, um, that if you got a mohawk, hands down, it would be less ridiculous than the mustache was. And? It absolutely is less ridiculous than Mm. the mustache. The mustache was horrifying. Terrible. Uh, Yeah. Somebody recently told me it was like an obese caterpillar on my upper lip. (laughs) Someone did recently say that it was like an obese caterpillar on top My of up- your lip. Yeah, right. So it's definitely not that bad. Huh. But um, Father Jedediah said it's not. It's a good look for an MMA fighter. It's exactly what he said. Yeah, and I would agree with that. Yeah, you kind of do look like an MMA fighter. What's that guy's name? Um, oh yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, I can picture him. Yeah. Well, here he, he just sent me another give you of him. That's oh, him. there he is. But I can't What's think of his, his name? name. Is it Chuck something? It's not Chuck Norris, right? It's not Chuck Norris or Randy. Uh, it looks like a Chuck or Randy, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's kind of, he's hitting it spot on. That's right on. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I, <laughs> have I said on, like, since we've recorded that, I can't believe we're doing this. I can't believe we're rolling forward with you in that. And then I you, think you did. Yeah. yeah I okay. think that's, those were the last words out of your mouth before I said, welcome back to the Great. Dirty Through the Faith okay. podcast. Well, we're here, and there's no turning back now, Padre. No, we're, it's we're go time. Over. Yeah. Right. So, I, anyways, um, we should pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, <laughs> amen. amen. Lord, we give you thanks for your abundant mercy. We ask that you may be with each and every one of us, especially those who are furthest from you, those who are struggling in their faith or have um, walked away from Christ and his church. 
And we pray especially for all priests today as we reflect on this gift of the priesthood, that you may strengthen all of our identities as your uh, ministers before, before you and before your people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. From the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Wow. Okay. So we're talking the priesthood. Um, as you can imagine, first part of the catechisms, the creed. I'm sorry. Yes. Second part. Go. I'll I'll keep rolling. I'll roll. You just you just gotta laugh. You laugh. I'll keep talking okay. my way through it. That'd be great. All right. Second part's about the sacraments. Third part is about the moral life. Fourth part about prayer. Mm-hmm. Of course, we're in the sacramental life of the church sure. here. Holy orders. It is the seven are the sixth sacrament that's mentioned in this. I'm just gonna sit like this. <laughs> <the rest. laughs> Yes, continue, Padre. Yes, absolutely. Okay. We are in the sacramental section of the catechism. And we're, we're early on in the part of uh, <laughs> about holy orders and talking about it in history. So like, what's the revelation of the sacrament of holy orders? Even the prefigurement in the Old Testament right. through the time of Christ who becomes the priest, the high priest, and then the participation in the priesthood of Christ. And what's the, what's the power given to these priests in conformity to, to Christ? Mm-hmm. It's really good so, stuff. It really is. Right. So we're 15 1539 through uh, 1553, I believe. Is that right? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. So beginning these first few paragraphs, the priesthood of the Old Covenant. Mm -hmm. So how does this get started in the Old Covenant? The chosen people were constituted by God as a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. But within the people of Israel, God chose one of the 12 tribes, that of Levi, and set it apart for liturgical service. So these priests are appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. Mm-hmm. Okay, so these are the priests in the old covenant, the tribe right. of Levi. Which, if if like, we, let's talk about maps for a moment. <laughs> this is great. Maps, Mohawks. Yeah, let's do it. And uh, so, if you look at like the uh, a lot of times in the back of a Bible, it's got biblical maps. And if you look at the Old Testament maps, a lot of times the land that belonged to each tribe in Israel will be plotted out, right? Okay. So this is where the tribe of Judah is. This is where <laughs> Asher was, and so on and so forth. But Levi has no no territory. The Lord himself was the inheritance of the tribe of Levi, that their whole life was oriented towards the Lord and his temple. So they had no they had no uh, land to raise animals. So part of the sacri- you know, that's why when you read like the book of Leviticus and it's, you know, so this is, you know, you bring this, this part of the, the lamb that you're going to sacrifice and the priest gets this for his family. Well, the priest didn't have anything except what was offered to, to them in liturgical service. So their whole lives were wrapped around this service that they offered to the Lord. Nice. Which is just a, it's a beautiful like <clears throat> thing that the Lord himself was their inheritance. Right. That is beautiful. Right. Yeah. Okay. And like you said, we're seeing this, the prefigurement of what is to come, the, mm-hmm. the foreshadowing of Christ and then the priesthood that is coming through Christ. Okay. So continuing in 1540, instituted to proclaim the word of God and to restore communion with God by sacrifices and prayer, this priesthood nevertheless remains powerless to bring about salvation, needing to repeat its sacrifices ceaselessly and being unable to ach- achieve a definitive sanctification, which only the sacrifice of Christ would accomplish. That's a, that's a great paragraph right there. So the priesthood in the tribe of Levi instituted to proclaim the word of God and to restore communion with God, how? By sacrifice and prayer. But even with that, is powerless to bring about salvation. Right. Again, this is it's pointing to the Messiah who would come and fulfill all of this. Right. Okay. So they would offer these different sacrifices <clears throat> time after time after time after time to every time there's a sin. And then just to compare with Christ, like Christ offers this one sacrifice that we constantly enter into that one sacrifice. So it's not a new sacrifice. It's entering into the one one. Whereas each time in the Old Testament, those are new sacrifices happening over and over and over. Nice. Okay. Continuing the liturgy of the church, however, sees in the priesthood of Aaron and the service of the Levites, as in the institution of the 70 elders, a prefiguring of the ordained ministry of the new covenant. And then the next several paragraphs, 15, 41, 42, and 43, give us some um, some of the prayers that are mm-hmm. in the, the ordination of bishops, priests, and deacons, which are really beautiful. They are. Mm-hmm. So um, in the rite of ordination, so there's, there's a part, there's... In every sacrament for the thing to happen, there's matter and form. So there's something physical, the matter, Mm -hmm. that always happens, and the form, the prayer that happens. So for example, in baptism, the the matter is the pouring of water over 
the person's head. And the form is you have to say the right words, right? I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So those two things go together. Sacrament happens. Mm -hmm. For the ordination of a priest, a deacon, or a bishop, uh, the the matter, the, the physical thing that happens is the laying on the hands of the bishop on the individual. And then the form is the consecratory prayer that comes before that. So you'll hear this big prayer, long prayer, but beautiful and rich in theology, mm. just absolutely chocked full of just gems. Mm. I mean, yeah, incredible. Mm. So so that prayer is prayed, and then the bishop lays hands on whoever's to be ordained. Mm. Yeah. So there, and each one of those in the rich theology points to this the either the priests of of uh, of Aaron or the uh, the seventy that are appointed to help Aaron or to help Moses. So you see that in the ordination of priests, you extended the spirit of Moses to seventy wise men. Mm -hmm. You shared among the sons of Aaron the fullness of their father's power. Mm -hmm. So it's like a participation in the power. So in some ways, the priests participate in their bishop's power. Mm -hmm. Right? We we're given. A, we're given permission to serve in the name of the bishop throughout this diocese. Mm -hmm. Right. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Anything else with, with that in the, the priesthood of the old covenant or any of that? Yeah. No. Okay. I just said yes and then no, but it was like kind it of... It was like, like, yeah, good question. No. It's Got exactly nothing. what it was. Yeah, Thanks I for translating you. what I'm saying. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, it's still there. Like he's, he's still in a mohawk. And I'm trying really hard not to laugh this whole time and like to take him seriously because he's saying really like he's saying good things. Yeah. But in my head, I'm like biting my tongue this whole time. Can, is it noticeable? I realize we're still recording. But yeah. Like this is a whole conversation. <laughs> I'm here, Julia. Right. <sighs> I can hear you. Okay. Anyway. Talking about me. We'll continue. All right. So 1544, we we're shifting to talking about Christ and the mm -hmm. way that Christ fulfills this priesthood. And a lot of the uh, the references, the footnotes are to the book of Hebrews. So if you want to look at how Jesus Christ is a priest, uh, you look at the book of Hebrews just spells it out really, really beautifully. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense, the letter to the Hebrews, because the Hebrews are the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. So writing about Christ to the Jewish people is going to show the different ways that Christ fulfilled uh, the Jewish, uh, the, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. Sure. So 1544, everything that the priesthood of the Old Covenant prefigured finds its fulfillment in Christ Jesus, the one mediator between God and men. Okay, that goes on talking about um, Melchizedek. Yeah, so the priests in the Old Testament offered something, mm -hmm. right? So they offered bread and wine. Melchizedek offers bread and wine. Mm -hmm. Or the priests at the Passover would offer a lamb mm -hmm. and Quiz show time. Okay. If Jesus Christ is a priest, what does he offer? Well, he offers himself. Yeah! I was like, is that a trick question? No, it's okay. not meant to be. I okay. wanted you to get it right. Okay, good. I wanted you to see how much you knew. Okay. Yeah. yeah and you did. Wow. So yeah, so Jesus, Jesus is both the offering mm -hmm. and the priest, the mm -hmm. one who offers himself, mm -hmm. which is really instructive for us, who, mm -hmm. and we're going to get later, who share in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, where we offer offer ourselves mm -hmm. as as priests mm -hmm. and as victims mm -hmm. right the victims not like a victim like the one who has a crime but the victim of what's being offered so right. yes and i this is all like we've talked about this i think in the um some of the eucharistic episodes that we did where we talk about what was happening during oh, the sacrifice of sure. the mass and christ being priest and victim and mm -hmm. right your role as the priest and all of that okay very good um so by a single offering, Christ has perfected for all time those who are sanctified, that is, by the unique sac sacrifice of the cross. Continuing in 1545, the redemptive sacrifice of Christ is unique, accomplished once for all, yet it is made present in the Eucharistic sacrifice of the Church. The same is true of the one priesthood of Christ. It is made present through the ministerial priesthood without diminishing the uniqueness of Christ's priesthood. Only Christ is the true priest, the others being only his ministers." So you're not a priest outside of Christ, the mystical mm -hmm. body of the church, the mystical body of Christ, Christ being the priest, the head of the church, and you enter into that. Drawn, yeah, mm -hmm. drawn into the the one priesthood of, of Jesus Christ. So it's mm -hmm. not like repeating like a bunch of priests. No, we all share in the one priesthood of Jesus Christ, just like in the analogies made with the Eucharist, right? Mm -hmm. The Eucharist is not uh, Christ being offered time after time after time after time. It's entering into the one offering of Christ on the cross. Right. So, right, good. And that's the beauty of the fact that Jesus is God amongst many things, mm -hmm. like times, like whatever, mm -hmm. you know, 
it's like just because that sacrifice on Calvary happened over t- or almost 2,000 years ago, mm-hmm. it was that was back then, this is now. It's like, no, in, in the God-man, mm-hmm. all time is united mm-hmm. in him, who is the beginning and the end. So, really yeah. See, he says such profound things, and then he looks absolutely ridiculous. Same. Julie, it's not the outside, but the inside that matters. Oh, that's what this is about. This is a test for me. I like yeah, it. I like to it. see if you, you judge the exterior. I like it. I like it. Thank you, Padre. You're growing me as a member of your flock. You're sure. bringing out the best. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. yeah or like manipulating. It. I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway, continuing. Um, the next couple paragraphs talk about two participations in the one priesthood of Christ. So what we call the common priesthood, which by virtue of our baptism, like we're all entered into. And then the ministerial priesthood, which is also termed in these paragraphs, hierarchical priesthood or ecclesial priesthood. So this would be the priesthood of the actual ordained minister. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the faithful exercise their baptismal priesthood through their participation, each according to his own vocation and Christ's mission as priest, prophet, and king, right? And I feel like we talked about that not too long ago as well. What does that mean? Um, The ministerial priesthood and the common priesthood participate each in its own proper way in the one priesthood of Christ. So again, Christ is the head, the one priest. We're all in that, drawn into that. While being ordered one to another, they differ essentially. In what sense? While the common priesthood of the faithful is exercised by the unfolding of baptismal grace, a life of faith, hope, and charity, a life according to the Spirit, the ministerial priesthood is at the service of the common priesthood. So the ministerial priesthood, the priesthood of which you are a part, Mm -hmm. is at service to the common priesthood, the priesthood of which I, as a baptized daughter of Christ, am a part of. Okay. Mm-hmm. Making sense? Yes. Yeah. It is directed at the unfolding of the baptismal grace of all Christians, the ministerial priesthood is a means by which Christ unceasingly builds up and leads his church. Yeah. Okay. So that's all like really instructive and actually makes a whole lot of like practical importance on practical matters. Cause it's not like, is this the priest thing or is this the people thing? our lives are actually directed towards each other, mm-hmm. right? The priest's life is directed towards the people. Now that doesn't mean he's like, uh, whatever at the people's command, right? And does whatever. But like Jesus Christ's whole work on earth is directed towards the people. It's also directed to the Father. Mm-hmm. And ultimately the goal is for Christ the good shepherd and for Christ the priest is to gather the people and to offer them to the Father. Mm-hmm. And that's our role as priests, right? Mm-hmm. Our lives are directed towards you, but it's not just to you to kind of be whatever, you know, like just to make you feel good about yourselves or do whatever you tell me to, mm-hmm. but it's actually to help your life be drawn in this one offering of Christ to the Father. And that is like, that's how our lives are interrelated, mm-hmm. right? Like if I'm just a priest, just doing my priest stuff all day by myself, or even that, that means celebrating mass, mm-hmm. which you do celebrate mass by celebrate mass by myself sometimes, but you've got to remember the whole mystical body of the church there. Mm-hmm. Um, like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense without the people, right? Mm-hmm. And being able to draw them into this one sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. Mm-hmm. So did you did I hear you right that you said your job as a priest is not just to do what we the people tell you to do? Yeah. Did anyone else go, why the heck did you put a mohawk in your head then? Does anyone else have that thought? <laughs> it's not your main motivation for gotta give the people what they want. The people want yeah. a mohawk for March, so I give the people a mohawk for March. True. So <clears throat> yeah, that is like really minuscule and I feel like my words are being used against me right now. Uh-huh. Which that's okay because I I'm sure I've done that to you on <laughs> thousands of occasions on this podcast. So you're completely justified in doing that. Um, And that is, you know, part of it is... I just, you know, for the people who who are choosing to only listen to audio, which I'm one of those people, typically, Mm -hmm. I really want them to know that this one is worth watching the video on. Oh, sure. Okay. Sure. So I'm just... Sure. When I shaved my head, it revealed my my head tattoos on one side. (laughs) It's not true. That's I'm not just true. nonsense now. But maybe <laughs> just nonsense now as opposed yeah. to before. It was not nonsense, but I just thought of something that maybe should have done but didn't do. Mm. Like what if I took the, you know, like a straight razor and I really kind of like bicked the head to really get it like the shiny on that mm-hmm. would have really made things stick out. Mm-hmm. I think Maybe next year. Out far enough. Okay. Okay. Moving on. In the person of Christ, the head. Okay. So this is where we get into the actual um, this this mystical body of the church, right? Right. A little bit 
not quite as black and white, not quite as practical, um, might stretch our intellects a little bit, which is good, because that's what we're talking about here. In 1548, in the ecclesial service of the ordained minister, it is Christ himself who is present to his church as head of his body, shepherd of his flock, high priest of the redemptive sacrifice, teacher of truth. This is what the church means by saying that the priest, by virtue of the sacrament of holy orders, acts in persona Christi cop. Ca- what is that? Capitis. Capitis. Like in a ball cap Christi, cap goes on the head. Ah, so the head okay. in the person of Christ, the head. Okay. Yeah. Right. Capital okay. punishment Ooh. off of the head. Off yeah. Of the head. So in the person yeah. of Christ, the head. Right. Okay. So, and, and the analogy like of, so, right. Like of, uh, you know, we talk about the body of Christ, mm-hmm. right. And the, the priest in Christ is the head mm-hmm. and the priest shares in the action of Christ. It's in shares in the person of Christ, the head. You're laughing. You're laughing. I, I started I laughing when laugh. you were laughing. No, you were you laughing. You started this. What were you thinking huh? when you were talking about being in the head, the Christ? What are you thinking about? You were talking about in I don't Christi, know. The, the head of Christ, and you're a priest in that. How You were laughing first. <laughs> I was not. Uh, we're going to go back and watch the tape and see who started smirking first. I dare say <laughs> it was not me. <laughs> I can't believe we're doing this. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. So the priest... I'm serious from now The on. priest, <clears throat> the ministerial priesthood acts in the person of Christ the head. All right, Christ the head who gathers the body to himself. Um, and I can't do it. All right, let's like, move on. I feel like I'm breaking on like a... I can't pull it together. That's I feel like right. this is Saturday Night Live and I'm like failing in my role to keep it together. Well, uh, much has been asked of you today thank you yeah. it has thank you for things you weren't prepared to, to partake no. in today so no i understand Julie. i have to say i didn't struggle this bad with the mustache like taking him serious so maybe this is more ridiculous i i don't know i don't know well, well, let's anyway, just move on let's we move don't on. need to analyze 1549 it too much. through the ordained ministry especially that of bishops and priests the presence of christ as head of the church is made visible in the midst of the community of believers in the beautiful expression of St. Ignatius of Antioch, the bishop is, help me out there, Padre. A type of your father. <laughs> well, read the actual. Oh, is I that don't. Latin? It's that, oh, that one's okay. Greek. Oh, Greek. Okay. Uh, type of your father. He is like the living image of God the Father. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that, yeah. So that, I mean, that's why we call um, uh, priest father. It's because mm-hmm. they're supposed to represent God the Father in mm-hmm. the Father's ministry and the presence of Christ the head in the church is made present through 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 these ordained ministers. And, mm-hmm. and that comes with all the great things and all the terrible things, you know, that um and even I, I remember in the rite of ordination many times uh the bishop is referred to as father or he refers to those being ordained as my my sons. Mm. So the the first one is uh when the the people are presented. So there's a priest normally that presents those to be ordained, and it was the uh, the rector of the seminary, and says, you know, most reverend father, holy mother church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers. Um, but it's not your excellency, or it's not, you know, whatever, whatever else, your grace or something mm. like that, bishop. Mm. Um, it's most reverend father, right? Because mm. He's these men through ordination are entering into the son sonship with their bishop. Mm-hmm. And that's the really the bishop is the father of his of his old diocese. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of deputized to be to be fathers also, mm-hmm. sharing in his. So mm-hmm. yeah. That's really beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Um <clears throat> okay. Oh, you probably like this one. The presence of Christ in the minister is not to be understood as if the latter were preserved from all human weaknesses the spirit of domination, error, even sin. The power of the Holy Spirit does not guarantee all acts of ministers in the same way. Mm -hmm. So our faults are real, right? Our own shortcomings, our sins, the, the, you know, our own sins affecting our children, right? Mm -hmm. Just like the sins of a parent affects their children. Oftentimes, Mm -hmm. whether it's whatever it may be, you know, if they're angry or they're, you know, unable to show love or affection, right? All of those affect children. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, our own weaknesses affect people, you know, they have a real effect on people's lives of faith. And it's, it's a great responsibility and, um, ultimately entrusted all into the Holy spirit. Cause he's, he's really the one that cares for them. So, right. Yeah. In fact, when you walked in with this Mohawk and I put it together, we're talking about Holy orders. I think that was my exact thing. Yeah. We need to highlight that paragraph that was like saying that 
mm-hmm. even though you're ordained a priest. And it says this guarantee extends to the sacraments, right? The sacraments mm-hmm. are the sacraments no matter where the, the priest is at in terms of their life of sin or whatever. Yeah, um, but, holiness and sin. Right, but uh, it does not preserve priests from human weakness, Etc. It in fine print, really fine print at mine. It says, or even doing ridiculous things like shaving mohawks into their head. Hmm. I don't know if you can see that in yours, but um, it's pretty small. Maybe it needs to be translated. <laughs> uh, maybe it's in Latin. That's right. It's, yeah, it's actually Greek. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but that's but that's actually like and. So the flip side of what the Holy Spirit does guarantee, right? Sure, the yeah, Holy Spirit yeah, yeah, yeah. doesn't guarantee that your priests are going to be free from sin. Mm-hmm. They're going to be perfect images of God, of Christ the head and all of this. Mm-hmm. But what does the Holy Spirit guarantee? That as long as your priest does what the church asks of him, the sacraments are present, mm-hmm. right? As long as that priest says the words of absolution, mm-hmm. your sins are forgiven. Mm-hmm. And as long as he says the words of consecration, Christ is present in the Eucharist, and this offering is is made present. So that's really good news, Mm -hmm. is that it's the efficacy of the sacrament is not, or the validity of a sacrament is not based on how holy the priest is. Mm -hmm. The sacraments are the sacraments, which is really good news. Now, there can be, like, there can be things that are less inspiring. There can be less things that are less than, like, uplifting, you know, if you can tell Father is just looking to get out of Mass because mm-hmm. whatever, or, you know, or if he's given terrible advice in the confessional, as long as he's given the words of absolution, sins are forgiven, so mm-hmm. praise God for that. Mm-hmm. And trust that the grace of God's going to work in that man's heart, mm-hmm. uh, in all of our hearts, because there's been times, you know, there have been, yeah. Yeah, like, um, yeah. The, the minister's sin cannot impede the fruit of grace. In many other acts, the minister leaves human traces that are not always signs of fidelity to the gospel and consequently can harm the apostolic fruitfulness of the church. So that's continuing in 1550. Okay. And that's good news for all of our faithful, right? Because this you're still going to get the sacraments. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not like some priests are, mm-hmm. you know... Their sacraments are better than others. And this does remind you, though, of the reality that priests are human beings, susceptible to the same things that all of us are susceptible to as human beings, um, which means that they need our prayers. And sometimes more susceptible, right? Um, uh, right. Sometimes more susceptible because you think if <clears throat> if if it is really important role as a priest to lead people to Jesus Christ, mm. you think about the devil is oh, going yeah. to work extra hard. Oh, yeah. um, because you, because of that multiplication effect, right? Mm-hmm. Because the devil sees, you know, you've got all of these people that are listening to a preach priest on uh, preach on Sunday. That mm-hmm. if the, if the devil can kind of work into that guy's mm-hmm. life and his heart to mm-hmm. have him not trust God and to make himself the center of the universe, like okay, bad things are going to happen. Absolutely. Um, so so we in some I guess I'm just saying we could be more susceptible. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Spiritual warfare. We all fight it, but yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely something real. O- only the, the proof, which is by all means, no joke, no joking aside to pray for your priest, sacrifice for sure. your priest. Um, yeah. Yeah. And as a Carmelite, I have a special vocation. That's part of the charism to pray for priests, right? Mm. To pray for, that's p- part of the char- charism to hold the entire church, the salvation of souls and to pray especially for priests. And I brought a prayer with me today Thank by you. one of the uh, Carmelite saints, St. Elizabeth of the Trinity, which is a really beautiful prayer mm. that we'll close with today in her prayer for priests. So sweet. anyway, okay. Continuing in 1551, the priesthood is ministerial. Uh, that office which the Lord committed to the pastors of his people is in the strict sense of the term a service. It's entirely related to Christ and to men. We chatted about this earlier, I Mm -hmm. think. It depends entirely on Christ and on his unique priesthood. It has been instituted for the good of men and the communion of the church. The sacrament of holy orders communicates a sacred power, which is none other than that of Christ. The exercise, this is really important, the Mm -hmm. exercise of this authority must therefore be measured against the model of Christ, who by love made himself the least and the servant of all. The Lord said clearly that concern for his flock was proof of love for him. So, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Whatever you do to the least, don't hold the authority over people's heads, right? Mm -hmm. That's not what Christ was asking of those who he drew into this priesthood. Sure. Yeah. I thought you were going to go full Spider-Man there. Christ gives this sacred power into those who've been given great power, great responsibility. Absolutely. Right. And th- that is so <laughs> like, um, we've been given the, so like if you take that sacred host and you say the words of consecration, mm-hmm. nothing's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And that's of course, no offense or anything sure, like that. Yeah, but no, yeah. when a priest does it, mm-hmm. something because they've been given this power to act in the name of Christ mm-hmm. in the name of the, the whole church. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and that is not something to lord it over, like you, as you were mentioning, but it actually has a great responsibility to be generous with it, mm. right? If, if the words I can say can help to absolve, can absolve people of their sins, what a responsibility it is to make yourself available so that as many people as possible can experience that, mm-hmm. right? If you've been given this resp- this power to, to make the Eucharist present, well, what a great responsibility that is to enter in, to one, be conformed to that, right? Mm-hmm. What's the, one of your favorite freight lines from the uh, rite of ordination of priests? Conform your, your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Mm-hmm. So to be conformed to that ourselves, mm-hmm. um, because we're sharing, like we have that responsibility to be generous with it with mm-hmm. the people, especially the sacraments. I've been thinking about that recently with um, like teaching God's people, mm-hmm. um, because you know the good people of the archdiocese have um, been generously supported our seminary so that us priests could be well formed. You know, I've mm-hmm. two master's degrees in mm-hmm. theology. Like who who else has gotten that? So there's a responsibility to then share that, especially mm-hmm. been given the grace of the Holy spirit to say, to speak well. And, you know, mm-hmm. so that he's at work through, through our words. So, yeah. Anyways. Uh, so that power that the Lord gives mm-hmm. involves a responsibility not to Lord it over, not to say, I, I know this, you don't. Mm-hmm. It's look at this gift that's been given to me. I want to share it with you. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about the teaching thing too, right before you said it. And the, and that, that reality as well, what a responsibility that is mm-hmm. to, to teach, to teach us what the truth is. And then that was jogging my memory when we talked about um, speaking the truth and where martyrdom <laughs> fell sure. into that in the catechism a couple weeks ago as well. Like, yeah. but that is a responsibility laid on all of our shoulders. Like we talked about like Mm -hmm. by virtue of our baptism in that 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 common priesthood we all share in that priest prophet and king um but in that special way that um yeah can't run from that where we need to be taught the truth and um that's why we have this podcast that's right yeah right as ridiculous as it is sometimes yeah yeah (laughs) right right all right okay in the name of the whole church, which mm-hmm. this is actually like kind of a, gr- a just beautiful idea also. Mm-hmm. So if you, you listen to the words of the Mass, you part of the priest's prayer, uh, most of the prayer is addressed to the Father, right? Mm-hmm. Is addressed to God the Father. Mm-hmm. So we stand before the people of God addressing God the Father. So it's not just that we represent Christ to the people, but we also represent the people to God. Mm-hmm. So we go before them and say, have mercy on your people, Lord, or um, uh, share with us your blessings. Or, you know, we pray for we pray for our bishop, we pray for our pope. Like, in the name of all these people, I'm offering this prayer uh, to the Father. So it's it's, again, like... A great responsibility. So we represent God to the people, and we represent the people to God. Mm-hmm. We share in the action of Christ the mediator, right? Mm-hmm. The go-between. Mm-hmm. We share in that work of, of Christ the head. So, mm. yes, yeah, so you listen to those prayers as mm-hmm. the priest is praying for the whole church. He's praying for those who have died, praying for, you know, for those who have fallen away from their faith, all those things. Mm-hmm. Um, that's our... That's mm. our um, that's our role. Actually, I had a kind of a fun experience of this. Well, I don't know if fun's the right word, but um, memorable. Mm-hmm. So I, I go on retreat regularly to this place called the the St. Thomas More House of Prayer. Mm-hmm. And uh, and the, this guy, incredible name, Wayne Hepler, founded it. And so they just gather seven times a day, all laity, and pray the liturgy of the hours, mm-hmm. so the prayer of the church. And the first time I was there, he came up and he said, Father, thanks so much for coming you make our prayer perfect prayer. Thanks for being here. Mm. I thought, that's very nice, but like, and I'm thinking in my head, and maybe he reads my soul, maybe he just knows. He <laughs> said, you know, like that general instruction in the liturgy hour says, the, when the priest is present, he acts in the person of offering the, the people's prayers and praises to the Father. Mm. So it's more perfect to have the priest present in the liturgy of the hours because there they are offering. That's, that's your role, Father, mm. is to offer our prayers to the Father. Mm. Of course, it's great for us to pray, but it's more perfect when you're here. Mm. I was like, wow. Wow. Thanks, Wayne. <laughs> uh, yeah. Beautiful, captivating, convicting all at the yeah. same time. Yeah. So if you're listening to this on Friday, the 25th, mm. later tonight mm. at 7 p.m. at Immaculate mm-hmm. Conception to celebrate the Annunciation mm-hmm. will be uh, evening prayer. Mm-hmm. So, And I get to the, the great joy of leading that because mm-hmm. the one, the only Father Jedediah will be leading us on the organ. Ooh, so, yeah, yeah, nice. That'll be beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Good. So... Mm. All right, I got a question for you. Okay. This is a question for you to answer to your brother priest. Mm. Okay, you prayed before we got started. You had a beautiful prayer to mm. 
like before we actually went live that we were just praying in the room, but priests who have, um, are struggling in their vocation or have lost their identity of what it means to be a priest or just get lost in the mess of it. Right. And get, get, get their eyes off Christ and what really is important. What is good for you when that temptation strikes to really focus on, to keep you reminded of what really is happening here in the beauty of your vocation as a priest? Do you have like a go-to of like, how do you keep your eyes focused on Christ Mm. during all the midst of the... Pray. Yeah. Pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm learning a lot of lessons as life goes on. Mm -hmm. So some of, sometimes these answers, just so you know, you get the, you get the, you get the headlines of what's, what's kind of floating on the, the head, head right now. But if, uh, I, and I've probably told you this before, but I recently had a religious sister back in December. I asked her, what advice do you have for a young priest? Her first response is, huh, Father, you can hardly consider yourself a young priest anymore. <laughs> Charming sister. Um, but she said, uh, you know, you have to be a son before you're a father. Mm. And those words like just rang true um, because our lives are so, there's so much to do. Right. There's so much, whether it's the sacraments, whether it's administration, whether it's teaching, whether it's employees, whether it's pastoral counsel, like there is so much to do. And you have this just role of a father constantly that sometimes I know I forget that actually my first role is a son. Mm -hmm. And that's all of our first roles is to be a son or a daughter Mm -hmm. of God Mm -hmm. Um, before we can step into that role of leading other people's there. We actually have to receive that first ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I know on my worst days that I, I forget that I'm actually, I actually need to be a son before, before the Lord first. Mm. And, and to recognize all the ways that sonship has been distorted, has been broken. I've ignored it. It needs to be repaired. Mm. Um, and normally as I allow the Lord to repair those things, then my own, my own identity as a father gets strengthened, right? Mm. When you, you realize who you are as a son, you, you meet God, the father, and then you're kind of sent off to imitate. So, Mm. um, yeah, I mean, I've been at it for five and a half years, so I, what do I know? But um, that's off the cuff. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Mohawk or not, people, that one got mad at me. I, I was attentive the whole time, hmm. Mohawk or not. So the Praise Lord, the Lord. <laughs> worked yeah. a miracle there. That was very profound. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And a good reminder to all of us, too, not just Brother Priest, but any of us who are struggling on our worst days to yeah. to remember that we are children first. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah, it's interesting how those relation how those that identity, you know, like we're f- those in the identity in a relationship, you know, is first things first, we're a child. Mm-hmm. And then we realize that there's other people in our lives normally called siblings. Mm-hmm. And so then we become like a brother, you know, mm-hmm. you've got to realize these interactions and even, and then, and then we, you become a father of your own kids. Mm-hmm. Actually, you become probably a husband first mm-hmm. and then you become a father, father mm-hmm. of your own kids. So mm-hmm. it's a, that, that happens spiritually too, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I can even like trace my own seminary life, right? Like first you kind of just have to, and this is, and you're constantly like reliving sure. the cycle, but yeah. that you're a son, right? Mm-hmm. The first, the first was realizing that God was real and all of that. And that, you know, you like to say it was young, but that develops a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then you go to the seminary and you, you have all these brothers that are on the same path. And then you really study theology and you grow in love with the church, right? You become a husband mm-hmm. to the church, your bride, and just mm-hmm. fall madly in love with the church. Mm-hmm. And then you're sent off to be to be a father to all these children. And mm-hmm. of course, you have to constantly, like, that's not like directly sure. linear cycle, but right. um, it grows. So, so I'd imagine there's something similar in people's lives mm-hmm. when we really reflect on it. And maybe mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's reminding me too of like the you know the, the liturgical calendar and we go from the season of Advent to you know ordinary time mm-hmm. to Lent and anyway Easter and often our our souls will do that as well. We have seasons of Advent, seasons of very penitential Lenten seasons, sure. Easter seasons, and then yeah. So it's like you're you're kind of always working through that that mm-hmm. cycle, and that's beautiful too to think about that reality. Wow, mm. Father, wow, yeah. Jeez. Hot dog. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Well, is it time to wrap this thing up? I think so. So while you're doing that, there's a couple paragraphs here that will kind of summarize this. This is 1591 and 1592. The whole church is a priestly people. Through baptism, all the faithful share in the priesthood of Christ. The participation is called the common priesthood of the faithful. Based on this common priesthood and ordered to its service, there exists another participation in the mission of Christ, the ministry conferred by the sacrament of holy orders, where the task is to serve in the name and in the person of Christ, the head in the midst of the community. 
The ministerial priesthood differs in essence from the common priesthood of the faithful because it confers a sacred power for the service of the faithful. The ordained ministers exercise their service for the people of God by teaching, divine worship, and pastoral governance. All right, man, where are we going? We'll see. <laughs> oh, uh, we already went to Jesus' trial. Oh, the Paschal Banquet. Oh. That seems like a Eucharistic one, Ooh. 1382 to 1401. Sweet. Well, I was actually aiming for the one below it about false gods, because that just caught my eye, but well, you were I, got close. The, I got one to the right and then above it. So. That's pretty close. Thank you. Man. Wow. All right, prayer. First, I'm going to quote St. Thomas Aquinas, which was in um, paragraph 1548 in the Catechism. And then I have this beautiful prayer of St. Elizabeth of the Trinity, again, a Carmelite um, a Carmelite nun who was ordained not too long ago, 2015, or ordained. Canonized. Sorry, we talked about ordained. Too much right. canonized. we all knew what you were talking oh, okay. about. Okay, good, 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 though, that you corrected. To, yeah, yeah, I wanted to. <laughs> all right, first St. Thomas Aquinas, Christ is the source of all priesthood. The priest of the old law was a figure of Christ, and the priest of the new law acts in the person of Christ. St. Elizabeth of the Trinity writes, I am praying fervently for you, that God may invade all the powers of your soul, that he may make you live in communion with his whole mystery, that everything in you may be divine and marked with his seal, so that you may be another Christ, working for the glory of the Father. May our souls be one in him, and while you bring him to souls, I will remain, like Mary Magdalene, silent and adoring, close to the Master, asking him to make your word fruitful in souls. Apostle, Carmelite, it is all one. And I should have mentioned, St. Elizabeth of the Trinity was writing that to a priestly brother of hers, one who she was praying for fervently. So pray for your priests. Thank you for being here. How long are you keeping that mohawk? A mm, few more hours. Okay. Yeah. It will not be present at Mass ever, right? Okay. So. All right. But you get to relive it in this episode. So. Yeah. Yeah. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to and to the, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end. end. Amen. In the name of the Father, Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen.